Oh great, it's Jeff. I just can't get rid of this dude. It's a big show. Y'all, some big news this week. Woo, I'm stoked. We're gonna talk about The Matrix 4. Yeah, that's a real thing. I'm gonna show you my interview with Morgan Freeman and Jada Pinkett Smith. And our number one story of the week is about Marvel Studios cutting ties with Spider-Man. Yeah, you heard me right. So like, what do I mean by that? What does that mean for Tom Holland? Did Cinema Blend's managing director cry? Yeah, he did. We'll attempt to answer all of these questions and more, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the show where I run down some of Cinema Blend's hottest headlines of the week, embarrass myself in front of celebrities during interviews, and generally just fumble my way through Hollywood. Is that out of the way? You get it? You get the concept? Good. In that case, let's check out our number five story of the week because I'm pretty stoked on it. The Matrix 4 is happening with Keanu Reeves. The internet's favorite person will be returning for The Matrix 4. Whoa. The Matrix was a massive success and was almost immediately followed up by two more films, neither of which were very well received by critics. Well, now they have a chance to leave on a better note, thank God. With Keanu Reeves returning as Neo, and Carrie Ann Moss on board as Trinity, BAM! I'm in, I'm 100% on board. I think there's a thousand reasons that the last two films weren't very good, including, but not limited to, the fact that there was a lot of pressure on them to push the envelope after the groundbreaking first film. It forever changed sci-fi and action in cinema. So with the pressure to do something new, we ended up with shit like this. Seventeen or so years is a long time to ruminate on what went wrong in the sequels, and I think this installment is gonna be dope as hell. So there! Now we just have to wait and see what's going on with the rest of the crew, including Lawrence Fishburne. No word on Morpheus as of yet, but we will keep you updated. Free your mind. In at number four! The first look at Amazon's The Boys Season 2 is bloody rude. Woo! If you haven't watched The Boys yet on Amazon, uh, get on that, because it's like really good. And everyone seems to agree, given the viewers and the critics. The show is based on a graphic novel of the same name that sees the boys in question trying to keep a group of superheroes in check. These assholes actually are the superheroes I'm referencing. I'm the world's greatest superhero. I can do whatever the f I want. Anyway, season one was super successful, season two is on the way, and showrunner Eric Kripke recently posted this. That's Kripke in the middle of the boys themselves, and the caption reads, a small token for the boys TV fans, world's first pick of season two. As you can see, we're up to our old tricks. If you haven't seen, join us. If you watch the show, you know that a bunch of blood and middle fingers isn't very far off from the overall tone. Carl Urban's Billy Butcher is noticeably missing from that photo. I'll burn. Your entire fucking family. There is a reason, but I don't want to include any spoilers from season one in case you're still catching up, so I won't speculate as to what that means in the context of this photo. We'll wait for another time. Instead, let's just get stoked, specifically because Kripke said this about his plans for the new season. I don't want season two to go bigger, I want it to go deeper, a more intense, more insane, more wrenching, more character-driven season. It's my one and only goal to make season two even better than season one. Woo! Ooh, let's do it! I don't know how they could do more intense and more insane, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. In at number three, looks like The Rock just fired back at Tyrese's Hobbs and Shaw shade. Still with this? Well, here's how I feel about that. You both sound like children! Ooh, I almost spilled my coffee. Yeah, I wasn't trying to scare you, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. It was our number one story last week, and now I'm done talking about it. In at number two, Avengers Endgame has one specific scene that really bugs Marvel Comics writer Dan Slott. Dan Slott, talented guy. He works for Marvel Comics, as I mentioned a moment ago and as it says right here. Anyway, he posted this to Twitter. Confession, there was one moment I did not like in all of Avengers Endgame. 
this. Peter Parker shouldn't kill, even when it comes to Thanos' evil army of alien space hounds. But not liking one moment out of three hours and two minutes ain't that bad. So he loves the film, as most people do, but he has a major gripe with it. Even though we know that Peter Parker doesn't want to kill people, he spends a lot of time making sure that doesn't happen. It's like a recurring joke. Activating instant kill. No, 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 no. I don't want to kill anybody. Deactivating instant kill. But because of that dope Stark technology, he has the ability to do so quite easily. Well, what I'm saying is he's always had the ability to do so. And the only time he's allowed it to proceed is when he's surrounded by Thanos' minions. So I don't know, man. I agree that he shouldn't kill people. So I'm not disagreeing with the dude. I'm just saying that even if we're going to say Peter Parker shouldn't kill, I would say rabid alien dog things are like, the one exception. Because otherwise, you're writing the character to only put him in situations that he can survive by being evasive. It's just unrealistic because they're all out there to like save the world, like save the past and the present and future. It's like, it's a lot to take on. It's very serious stakes here. Was he s supposed to just swing around during all of that? And it's not like it's gonna change anything. Like moving forward, I don't see Peter Parker just like smoking fools left and right. Like he got like a taste for blood and now he's just like, using instant kill all the time. I mean, it was very specific to Endgame, is what I'm saying. Anyway, on a different note, I recently got to speak with the massive cast of Angel Has Fallen, the film that just officially made Gerard Butler a trilogy action star. How crazy is that? Well, among the cast is Morgan Freeman, who plays the President of the United States, which got me thinking there's all this talk about Tom Hanks being president, or about Dwayne Johnson being president. <laughs> I suppose that's what happens when you elect a reality TV star. People start speculating accordingly. But what about Morgan Freeman? The dude also played the president of South Africa, secretary of state, VP, God, and so on. At this point, I feel like we should just elect Morgan Freeman as president. But he doesn't seem to be down for such a position in real life. Check it out. Why is Morgan Freeman constantly being cast as these ultra powerful people? I would like to know. <laughs> Why? He's basically a world leader now. Like, can we just assume? Yeah, I'm not too. <laughs> <laughs> I really make more money as an actor. <laughs> so he has no idea why he keeps getting cast in those types of roles, and he wouldn't want to be in power because acting pays more. That's a great answer. I realize now, after the fact, that I kind of implied he always plays the same type of character. Might have sort of called him out for being typecasted. Like, is that offensive for actors? Powerful and wise older man in every film. Well, I also asked Jada Pinkett Smith about the consistent roles we've been seeing her take on, clearly having not learned my lesson. Can't help but notice that you've developed a really impressive career of playing badasses. <laughs> Have I? <laughs> Especially as of late. Um, do you think the, the reason you play a lot of strong characters is because that's what you look for in a role and that's what you enjoy uh, pursuing? I think it's because it definitely, they, they are the roles that I have a lot of fun with, for sure, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to open my horizons to <laughs> different kinds of, Roles, different well, I guess, energies. I guess when you're a badass, you can't help it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was only a fraction of the huge names that make up the cast of Angel Has Fallen. And it's a really impressive film. You can check it out in theaters right now. So now it is time for our number one story of the week. Marvel and Sony's Spider-Man deal has reportedly come to an abrupt end. I mean, what else could our number one story be? We have to talk about this. I'm not gonna pretend to have all the details, but in short, here's what's going on. I'm gonna try to make this as current as possible. Sony owns the film rights to Spider-Man. They did this and this and made some money. Well, Spidey is obviously a Marvel character and they wanted him in the MCU bad. So a deal was made, mwah, Marvel and Sony get together. Bam, Tom Holland swings in as Spider-Man for five films. Under ruse! Hey everyone. Good job. Well now, Deadline has reported that Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige will not produce any more Spider-Man films. Wow, that's big. Especially considering that Spider-Man Far From Home was Sony's biggest box office success of all time. Disney apparently wanted a 50-50 co-financing agreement and Sony was like, nah brah. However, a Sony rep has now said that the disagreement was over a producer credit and a deal could still be made. 
Tom Holland and director John Watts are still signed on to do two more Spider-Man flicks, as far as we all know. I know, I know, like, how does that work? It's all very odd. But as it stands right now, Spidey cannot go hang out with his buds in the MCU. Well, if there's one silver lining, it's that the tweets and memes have been fantastic. <laughs> Maybe this will change very soon. Or maybe Tom Holland's Spider-Man is headed to hang out with Tom Hardy's Venom in Sony's separate Spideyverse thing. I don't know. But for massive Spider-Man geeks out there, like our very own managing director, Sean O'Connell, this is terrible news. He tweeted this. Reality setting in, Spider-Man will never get to share the screen with the Fantastic Four. He'll never team up with Wolverine, Spidey and Deadpool. Nope. How does this make any sense creatively? And then he had a nervous breakdown. <sighs> I don't, I don't, oh, I can't understand this on any level. I'm worried about him. Watch his full initial reaction to the news by following the link in the description. I guess the question now is, can Sony handle Spider-Man without Marvel Studios being creatively involved? Let's hope so. <laughs> This Spidey news is gonna develop quick. I don't know when this information is gonna be considered dated, but we will do our best to keep you updated. Cause this shit's heavy. We'll see what happens. Well, that's it, man. Episode 12, Dunzo. Yes! That means I've officially produced about two hours of content for this show, and I'm pretty proud of that. That's like a feature film or a fraction of It Chapter 2. If you had fun, please hit subscribe and make sure to follow all of my adventures on social at Jeff McCaw. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.